What's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. I'm your host, Max Torres, publisher and lead editor of Ducks Digest, covering the Oregon Ducks for Sports Illustrated on Fan Nation. And uh, in this episode, we're continuing uh, our analyzing of Mario Cristobal's departure from Oregon to become the new head coach at Miami. And we're taking a recruiting angle on this episode of the podcast. Joining me is Sports Illustrated Recruiting Director, John Garcia Jr. John, how we doing, man? Thanks for being here. I'm doing well, Matt. Just uh, busy times, right? Signing day next week, coaching carousel, spinning like never before. So I'm just trying to keep up like you. It is absolutely wild seeing how uh, all of this stuff has unfolded and and um, all the fallout from all of it. Um, so, I mean, we're recording this at 618 Pacific time uh, in the evening. Um, so who knows what's going to happen by the time this gets posted, but three D commitments already, um, since Mario Cristobal announced that he's going to be taking the new job at Miami, you're looking at quarterback Tanner Bailey from Alabama. The first one to reopen things linebacker commit TJ Dudley also from Alabama. And then the headliner coming down just uh, a short while ago, uh, Texas offensive lineman, Kelvin Banks. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people were trying to make sense of this asking a lot of questions, but at the same time, it's it's pretty obvious why it's happening because Mario's leaving. What, what are your reactions uh, seeing that you're, you know, pretty plugged in on a national scale and and you're also a guy out there in Florida? Well, Max, you look at the locations that you brought up, you know, Alabama, Alabama, Texas for the three prospects who decommitted. It's no secret that Oregon is a national brand, but it really relies on the West Coast. So when you have a coaching change and that coach has ties to the south and a national footprint when transition happens there's going to be a recruiting fallout you know most of these kids did not grow up idolizing oregon beyond you know maybe the jerseys and the perception of the program so when when the coaching staff does make that transition naturally other options are going to be considered and each of those three have long been courted by other schools and i think that correlates plenty with you know the strong recruiting footprint that Mario set at Oregon, as well as the talent level of those prospects. So naturally, you're going to decommit if you've got other coaches in your ear. And that was probably the most common theme with those three who backed off today. It is to be expected, uh, unfortunately, for Oregon fans. But look, this is just a part of making a transition. Oklahoma suffered massive decommitments. USC massive decommitments it's really universal there's not one school that is sort of immune clemson has had a decommitment uh on monday so it is really it kind of going on everywhere uh, but obviously in the oregon market it's three in a very short span so it feels almost like panic mode but it is not you know oregon is going to recover once it it, it gains its bearings and, and hires a new coaching staff but when it's out of region like this it is somewhat to be determined, and that's where we're seeing a, a lot more fluidity with this Oregon Duck commitment class. You talk about panic mode. Certainly, uh, I could see why Oregon fans would think that, but in the time since uh, Cristobal's departure, Rob Mullins held a press conference talking about uh, kind of the, what what went into uh, Cristobal's decision, I guess, and, and their conversations up until the announcement. And uh, they have begun a national search for, for their new coach, and, and they know that it's uh, something that they have to do really soon here, um, obviously with the uh, early signing period coming up. that I, That's, I think, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you, John. With the timing of all of this, it's pretty wild considering that Lincoln Riley comes to USC and they have all the momentum in the world now, it feels like, even after having some of those initial commitments. Whereas Oregon, I mean, you can't feel help but feel like you're at a tremendous deficit uh, without a coach heading into this uh, pivotal week. Look, there's no doubt the timing does not favor Oregon here. And, and it's really not Oregon's issue. That was kind of Miami's issue, right? Treading water with the, the messy dismissal of Manny Diaz. It, it took, you know, a week too long to make that move if you're Miami. But Miami wanted to be sure Crystal Ball would come. And I think there was a back and forth there that shows you how committed to Oregon Mario was. This wasn't a no-brainer hey, anytime you call, I'm going to jump in on Miami kind of deal. It, it took some pushback uh, from both sides to get a deal done. But Miami wanted to be sure Cristobal was ready. So naturally, the decision took a lot longer to get rid of Diaz. But you can't panic based on the calendar either at that same token because signing day is just one thing, right? It's the first day of the early signing period 
The traditional signing period is still in place for February 2nd, 2022. The transfer portal, as we all know, has added hundreds, literally, of new players over the last few weeks alone. So any transition class is really tough to judge and rank and and perceive. So I think for this Oregon group, it's going to be a lot more of that. Maintaining your roster, figuring out which coaches are staying, which assistant coaches are going as you make that search for the next head coach. That's more important than rushing something just because of the early signing period beginning next Wednesday. Even if they were to name a new coach tomorrow, Max, I don't think you could salvage some of the losses that Oregon has already had on the trail and obviously down the road. You don't want to look back and say, man, we rushed that just because we wanted to be in position to to have another number one recruiting class in the Pac-12. It's important, but you can't rush the rest of that process just because of one thing. Couldn't agree more. I, I feel like I'm, I'm exactly with that sentiment about not wanting to rush it. Um, I think on the surface, it's it certainly makes sense to, to think that that would you know, be something that you have to do, get it figured out right this second. But uh, Rob Mullins has done this for a while, and, and he's made some pretty solid hires, you know, Say what you will about the past two leaving really quickly. I I will say that I feel like Cristobal's departure was a little bit more graceful than than uh, Taggart's, um, you know, with him being the other Florida guy. But I think one of the questions I wanted to ask you, John, I know obviously recruiting's your focus, but I really like you know reading some of the stuff that, that you do on, on a national scale for for college football, and I know you do a lot of podcasts on everything that's going on. When you're looking at this hire and um, you know, kind of what's going into it, I feel like Oregon's challenged uh with finding a balance of an x's and o's coach versus someone who's a really good recruiter and i feel like there's only a handful of guys in the entire country that can recruit like cristobal can so how do you try to balance those two things as you're looking for your next guy well that's the million dollar question right or multi-million dollar question in this regard you know max i I think this is a search that's going to have a a more heavy West Coast focus. You mentioned it earlier. The last two coaches, Florida, Florida natives, Floridians who went back home for their dream job. It's kind of just an odd scenario where it worked out similarly with, with Tiger as well with as with Crystal Ball. So that's not going to happen again. I think you go more West Coast. You're going to go offense in general, in my opinion, in terms of the head coaches on the field expertise. So I do think those things have natural recruiting impacts. If it's a West Coast guy, you're going to be strong in California like the Ducks have been. If it's an offensive guy, that perception of Oregon being a fast, high-tempo, high-octane offense is going to be maintained by this new coaching staff. And that's really been the continuity from, you know, Kelly to Helfridge through through all the way to Crystal Ball at this point is that perception of Oregon can't change because it's a school that can't recruit hyper locally you can't build the entire roster within state and border state prospects you need to expand throughout the west coast and and, and still play to that national footprint so I'm, I'm thinking big name west coast and offense i mean those are really the three things that i three boxes i think that this administration has to check in finding its new coach uh, and, and yeah maybe one not from florida who has a dream school that that's going to fire their coach in the next couple of years we're going to be keeping an eye on how Oregon strikes that balance with its next hire. Talking with Sports Illustrated Recruiting Director John Garcia Jr. John, I think another question that's on a lot of people's minds, as as uh, particularly Oregon fans' minds, as they kind of navigate how to react to all this news. You know, surely more stuff's going to be coming out in, in the coming days. I think one of the biggest positives from Cristobal's tenure is how prevalent they were in the South. And I think it doesn't take a genius to, to think that uh, Crystal Ball is going to have a ton of success recruiting uh, in that footprint in the Southeast, maybe probably more so than while he was at Oregon. But how do you think you view Oregon's presence in the Southeast or try to project that going forward as we wait for the new coach? Yeah, obviously it's going to depend on, on the new coach's desire to play, play with the big boys, right? I mean, that's what Mario was willing to do. Are you going to compete with, Georgia and Alabama and Florida and Ohio State and Clemson, just programs that have been entrenched in the state of Florida. Oregon's been one of the programs that's been able to do it, along with like a Texas A&M and Oklahoma, even a USC under the Clay Helton regime. So it's really a matter of preference. Do you want to play that game? I think Oregon has to, to stay relevant, to stay at the the, the forefront of Pac-12 recruiting um but but obviously look mario cristobal is going to be 
in Florida. We know Florida just hired Billy Napier. Florida State's recruiting better than many expected under Mike Norvell. Bama's still Bama. Georgia's still Georgia. Clemson's still got Dabo. So it's going to be a heavyweight fight regardless of who the person is at the helm for Oregon. But with what that perception entails, and that is speed, uh, physicality, explosiveness, the South and the Southern athlete just has a lot of, of those traits at their disposal. There's just more kids down there who can make plays um, in, in addition to the West Coast that has been your pipeline and your base for years at Oregon. So you have to continue to try to go down there. Maybe you don't pick your spots the same way Cristobal did. We know there was a hyper focus in Alabama because of his ties to Nick Saban and that and his time on that coaching staff. So maybe it won't be something niche or specific like that. But in terms of recruiting Florida, Texas, Georgia, th th that's a must for every school that wants to be perceived as a recruiting champion or a potential conference champion. And obviously, that's what Oregon wants to, to maintain through this transition. I've been saying for a while that Oregon needs to get back into Florida and probably goes without saying that it just got a whole lot harder with Cristobal going to Miami. Um, but like you said, we have to see who the Ducks bring on to uh, replace him. Another aspect of this whole uh, you know, saga, I feel like, is, a, is an appropriate thing to call it with, with how this all unfolded with, with Manny Diaz just getting treated so poorly by Miami and then just this really – coming down to the wire it felt like you know between Cristobal was very torn he he you know went on uh, John Canzano's radio show and, and kind of had that extra exit interview with a lot of really good stuff just kind of clearing the air and was very gracious and grateful to Oregon but I say all that I'm curious how you think this recruiting battle is going to kind of develop between Oregon and USC seeing that in these past couple years Oregon has been the powerhouse in the Pac-12 and now uh, Lincoln Riley is, uh, you know, bringing a lot of ammunition with him on their retreat recruiting trail at USC. Well, that's the main target. I mean, we're talking about it with Cristobal in Miami. He has to lock down Miami for the Hurricanes. Lincoln Riley was brought in because he's had so much success already recruiting the Los Angeles area. And it's no secret that USC goes down in perception when they can't keep kids at home. Um, and just look at that Oregon roster Right now, a lot of Southern California kids dotting that roster, and they're some of the impact players for the Oregon Ducks. So, yeah, you want to win the Pac-12, you got to win L.A. So there's no doubt that the new coach has to have some kind of plan for L.A. It doesn't mean he has to be an L.A. guy. Certainly Mario wasn't, but there has to be a built-in plan to recruit that area and Southern California well. His, you know, his ace in the hole was, was Dante Williams before he made the move. Uh, to USC. So th there has to be a contingency plan in place to attack that LA footprint because it's just a must. It's the most fertile ground on the West Coast when it comes to recruiting. And it's something that USC is trying and spending a lot of money to overcome and get back to. So Oregon has to do the same thing and almost match that, that USC energy. And I think there's an opportunity there because Lincoln Riley, while he recruited well in LA, he's He's not known just for that. So I think there is a counter uh, pro approach uh, that Oregon can jump into here uh, in the months to come. But obviously, you, you got to find the right guy, and he's got to build a coaching staff that is willing to counter and show a different approach in the greater Los Angeles area because this run of Oregon winning Pac-12 recruiting titles uh, could come to an end pretty quickly if they don't. Couldn't have said it better myself, John. You know, Ducks really got to win L.A., like you mentioned. That was really the area that we saw Mario Cristobal hyper-focus on before he really expanded it more and, and took it nationwide. Um, John, always great having you on here. Love talking about recruiting. Love getting your perspective. Um, you know, you're all over the place uh, checking out recruits. Um, before we get you out of here, uh, if I'm work. Yeah, si.com slash college, si all American, uh, or, or check us out on Twitter at John Garcia underscore JR. Less, less than a, a week and a half until National Signing Day. So a lot of things going on, big commitments, flips, and uh, apparently more coaching changes to come. So stay tuned. Right on, right on. Make sure to, to go check out John's stuff, his work. He's got a lot of stuff coming out as we uh, head towards the early signing period here in just a, a little while. 
If you want to find more of me, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Oregon Football Max Taurus, and you can follow me on Twitter at MTaurus Sports. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast, and we will see you in the next one.